So this video is going to deal with quadratic sequences. So what exactly is a quadratic sequence? So let's say you have this sequence of numbers, 7, 17, 31, 49, and 71. And immediately what you would always do with a sequence of numbers is start analysing the differences. So here we have a difference of 10. Here we have a difference of 14. Here we have a difference of 18. And here we have a difference of 22. So straight away we knew something is different to what we've dealt with before. Normally when we analyse the differences, straight away we get the same difference each time. But here we are not getting the same difference each time. So now let's just analyse what's going on with the differences. Between 10 and 14, that's 4. Between 14 and 18 is 4. And 18 and 22 is also 4. Okay, now we're getting the same difference. But it's not the same first difference, which is what we're used to with an arithmetic linear sequence. This is only showing the same second difference. And that straight away is what makes this a quadratic sequence and not, as I said before, a linear sequence. So the same second difference. So that's key. And if you're ever asked to explain how you know it's a quadratic sequence, then they're the key words that you need to use. You know it's a quadratic sequence because it's the same second difference and not the same first difference. Okay, so how do we deal with a quadratic sequence then? And how do we find its nth term, more importantly? So with this, one thing we do know about quadratics is a quadratic always takes the form of a n squared plus b n plus c. You always have something squared plus something n plus something. That is the general form of all quadratics. So the nth term then we know has got to take this form. So what we need to do is we need to find out the values for a, b and c. Now this isn't something that's given to you in the log tables by the way. This is something that you have to remember that if you are looking for the nth term of a quadratic sequence it will always take this form. So that's the first thing you get down for yourselves straight away. And now as I said we're going to find our a, b and c. So I'm going to break this down into steps. Step one. To find the a, a is always going to be half the second difference, okay? So in this case, it's going to be a half of four. So a half of four is two. So a is equal to two. Now that's something, again, that you're gonna to have to remember. a is always half the second difference. Okay, step two. For step two, in order to try and find your B and C, step two, what we're going to use is information from our sequence. For example, what do I know? Well, I know that um, the first term is seven, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill in this information as best I can into this, okay? So instead of N, I'm talking about one, the first term. So t1 is equal to a times one squared, I'm subbing in one for n, remember, plus b times subbing in one for n plus c. And actually, I already know what a is, so I'm going to sub that in here. a is two. And I know that all of this has to work out to be what the first term is, which is seven. So I can fill that in as well. So that's all that information that I already know. I already know a equals two, and I already know that the first term is seven. So using that information, when n is one, i.e. the first term, that whole thing results in the answer seven. Okay, so if I just tidy that up for myself now, here's what I'm gonna get. Seven is equal to two plus b plus c, and just tidy up the number work there, I end up with five is equal to b plus c. And that's as far as I can go with that. So now I'm going to do step three. And step three is going to be very similar to step two. I'm just going to use the next term in my sequence, which is 17. 
Um, so term two is equal to 17. And in the same way as I did for step two, I'm gonna sub in all this information that I know into this nth term form. So instead of n, I'm subbing in two. A, I already know is also two. And this time n is two as well. So I get the second term is equal to two times two squared plus b times two plus c. And that then is going to result in 17. Tidy up the number work, take away eight from both sides, and I end up with two b plus c is equal to nine. So now look what I have. I've got two equations now with two unknowns. So my last step, step four, I'm going to solve those simultaneous equations. So your C's are lined up quite nicely to cancel. I just need to make one, sure one's a plus and one's a minus. So I'm gonna multiply the bottom line by a minus one. So the top line stays the same, five is equal to b plus c, and I'm multiplying everything in the bottom line by minus one. So nine times minus one is minus nine, minus one times two b is minus two b, and minus one times c is minus c. So now they cancel when we're adding these together, which is exactly what you want to have happen. b minus two b is minus b, and five minus nine is minus four, which implies then that b is equal to four. So there's my b. So using that then, I'm gonna sum it back into one of my original equations. Um, I'm gonna use the top one, it's nice and easy. Uh, b is four, remember, so subbing that in. Take away four from both sides, and I'm getting that c is equal to one. So now with all those bits of information, don't forget to put it back into your nth term form, which of course is a n squared plus b n plus c. We know what the a is, we got it uh, previously, which is two. And now we know what the b is, the b is four. And now we know what the c is, the c is one. So there is my final answer. The nth term for that quadratic sequence is two n squared plus four n plus one. Okay, try this question finding the nth term of this quadratic sequence. Press pause and see how far you can get with this. So analyzing straight away the differences, I get plus seven, plus 11, plus 15, and then analyzing these differences, I get plus four and plus four. So straight away, that's how I know it's a quadratic sequence because I have the same second difference. So we know then, therefore, it's got to take the form a n squared plus b n plus c. And as I said, you need to remember that that's the form of every type of quadratic, a n squared plus b n plus c. So step one, we're gonna find the value of a. And a is always half the second difference. And in this case, the second difference is four. So a is equal to two. Okay, so step two then, we're gonna use our information that we have here about the first term, in other words, T1, and T1 is three. So putting that information as best I can into this form, I'm going to be able to get an equation in B and C. So the first term, I'm subbing in one for N. And of course, I know what A is, so I can sub that in as well. And I know also that this all has to work out to be three because the first term is three. So tidying up the number work there, I get one is equal to B plus C. So there's my first equation in B and C. So now I'm going to do a very similar thing, but this time using the information that the second term in the sequence is 10. So if I'm subbing in two for N this time, and of course, I know what my a is. My a is two as well. So I'm getting two times four is eight. And that all has to work out to be 10 
because 10 is the second term. Tidy up the number work and I get 2 2b plus c is equal to 2. Okay, so now I'm ready for my final step uh, and that is use those two uh, equations now and I'll solve them simultaneously. I'll be able to solve for b and c. So uh, my c's are lined up again to cancel but I need to have, make one a minus so I'm going to multiply the bottom line by minus one. The top line therefore stays the same. Minus one times two is minus two. Minus one times two b is minus two b and minus one times c is minus c. C's will cancel then and I get b minus 2b is minus b and 1 minus 2 is minus 1. Therefore b is equal to 1. Okay, so I'm going to use that information then and I'm going to sub it back in to one of my original equations. I'm going to pick the top one. Um, b is 1, remember, so I'm subbing in 1 for b and I'm left with 1 take away 1 which is 0. Okay, now that might happen, that's not a problem at all, that is totally accurate and correct. And all it means is, now when I go back and sub in to my nth term form, I'm filling in my values. A, I have 2. B is 1, so it's going to be 1 times n, which is n. And C is nothing, so it's add on nothing. And so my nth term of the quadratic sequence is 2n squared plus n. Okay, so last question. Try this, 7, 16, 31, 52. Find the nth term of this quadratic sequence. Press pause, see how far you can get. So analyzing the differences here, we get that's uh, 9, 15, 21. And analyzing the differences between those, I get 6 and 6. Okay, so I know it's a quadratic sequence because it's the same second difference. So we know it's of the form a n squared plus b n plus c. Okay, step one, find a and a is always half that second difference. So half of 6 in this case, which is 3. All right, so a is 3. Step two then, I'm going to take information from my sequence here and I know that the first term t1 is equal to 7. So using that information I'm going to fill it in as best I can into this. Instead of n of course I'm filling in 1. Uh, so it's going to be a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c and that gives me of course, I can also fill in the a, so let me do that in this next step. I now know that a is equal to 3, so instead of a, I'm going to sub in 3. b times 1 is b. Um, I know that is going to be 3 plus b plus c on the right-hand side, and this all has to result in 7, because I know the first term of the sequence is 7. So tidying up the number work here, I end up with 4 plus b plus c. And there's my first equation in b and c. I'm going to do a similar thing now for step three, but I'm going to look at the second term. So t2 is 16. So subbing in 2 for n in my uh, nth term form. So it's going to be a times 2 squared plus b times 2 plus c. Again, I know what the a is. The a is 3, so I can sub that in. And that works out to be uh, 12 plus 2b plus c and of course the second term I know is 16 so I can fill that in for that. So take away 12 from both sides and I am left with 4 is equal to 2b plus c and there's my second equation in b and c. So my last step, step 4, I'm going to solve these two now simultaneously. So I have 4 is equal to b plus c and 4 is equal to 2b plus c. Again, my c's are nicely lined up there, but I need to make 1 a minus, so I'm going to multiply the bottom uh, equation by minus 1. Top one stays the same. Minus 1 times 4 is minus 4. Minus 1 times 2b is minus 2b, and minus 1 times c is minus c. And that cancels b minus 2b is minus b, and 4 take away 4 is 0. So I'm left with b is equal to 
zero. Okay, so let's fill that in. So four is equal to B plus C and B is zero. Um, then I get zero for B, therefore C is equal to four. All right, so there are my four pieces of information that I'm gonna sub in to a n squared plus b n plus c. Um, a of course is three, b is zero, and c is four, which means that that whole thing simplifies to, zero times n is nothing of course, three n squared plus four. So the nth term of this quadratic sequence is 3n squared plus 4.